All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golan from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM joining you from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Jay Massey, who is up in Orange County, just north of me. How are you doing, Jay? I'm good so far. <laughs> well, hopefully I'll stay good for the duration of the interview. Uh, oh, so, uh, at least yeah. that long. Yeah, so Jay, Jay is a husband, father, author, speaker, and host of Cashflow Diary and Cashflow Diary Daily podcast on iTunes, and investorpreneur. And what he's going to talk about today is, so this is interesting, Jay. So you went from squatting in a bank-owned property to mm -hmm. successfully operating over 34 short-term rentals, and mm -hmm. your success has now enabled you to switch your focus and help other people become bigger, better, better entrepreneurs. So let, let's go back to the beginning. Um, as, as someone who, uh, I did stay in a squat for a time, one time way back in the day when uh, in yeah. London, uh, when we used to go to London for the summers from, from Dublin. And uh, so um, tell me how you, how you ended up in the squat and then how you turned it all around to get to where you are today, helping people be successful. Got it, got it, got it. So the situation, I, I guess, is kind of, you know, it could happen to anyone and could be happening mm -hmm. to someone listening right now. I mean, yeah. it's not something I planned, <laughs> that's for yeah. sure. And I don't think anyone ever does. No one wakes up and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to aim for the bottom today. So let's see, <laughs> how bad can we do? Uh, it, there was a culmination of events where my wife, when she's pregnant, uh, she has a condition known as hyperemesis. It means she can't eat or drink. I went to go play volleyball. I landed on a guy's head, punctured my lung. Um, that plus a drug interaction. A complicated with asthma meant I could not walk and talk simultaneously without fainting. So when neither of you can physically go to work, not by choice in neither case, it, when you can't physically go to work, it, you don't have a way of generating an income. And that was the first of many painful lessons is you don't necessarily need a job, but you do need a source of income, mm -hmm. which also became the key to figuring out how to get out of it. How can I, what can I do to create an income without having to physically go to work? And I find that to be very true. Questions are the answers. Yeah, that's a, that's a fascinating point. And one I'm sure lots of people over, lots of people either have never thought about or maybe have overlooked. It's such a, it's such a fundamental point. As you say, you need a source of income, not necessarily a job. So if you're prevented from doing maybe you know, a lot of traditional jobs, then you have to get a little creative and figure out how you can have an income. Yeah. I mean, if you just invest a little bit of time and looking at, let's look at the differently abled. If someone loses mm -hmm. a limb, uh, what do they do? They adapt, uh, you yeah. know, and they find another way to still do some of the same things that, well, they used to do, whatever that might be, whether that be rock climbing or running a race or swimming or basketball, it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter. And you, you find that to be a very human trait. The difference is yep. they weren't given a choice. It wasn't a comfortable decision. They wouldn't have chosen it. And what I have found is, well, that's not true for most of us. Given a comfortable choice, we'll take that one. And because we don't have to do the extra work, we won't And until we're forced to. And for me, that was the situation. There's nothing special. I was just afraid of not eating. Yeah. Period. And it wasn't like a, a false fear or kind of fear mm -hmm. because, I mean, I've worked uh, prior to all this. I was a financial sure. planner and people would tell me, Jay, I don't have any more money. And what they really meant is I'm down to la my last $2 million. What am I going to do? And I, that's not, that wasn't my situation. It yeah. was sell something today. Otherwise, you will not eat <laughs> tomorrow. And when you have that kind of a motivation, you work differently, you understand things mm -hmm. faster, you implement and you don't have the time to let comfort kill your dream. Yeah, I love that. I love that, Jay. I love that idea of not allowing comfort to kill your dream. Because yeah, I mean, there's, sort of, there's lots of us who have uh, and lots of people who have like great ideas or whatever. But as you say, we may not have the compelling event or something to push us to uh, to execute on. So, how did you how did you decide on short term rental as as a as a good vehicle? Got it. So, most everything. I mean, there's a through line in everything that I do, and it's usually a solution to a problem that I might have been experiencing. For example, uh, when I wanted a source of income without having to physically work, 
real estate came to the forefront. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. That's what we're going to do. As you build the real estate portfolio, as we have and do, uh, you then realize other issues inside there. So that's why we, many people know that we've changed all kinds of strategies. Short-term rentals is just a response to consumer demand, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, because we, all of us, are participating in the quote-unquote gig economy in some way, shape, or form. And it, when it comes to real estate, one of the opportunities and challenges is that as technology enters, you know, how, how do you, quote unquote, sell your real space for just enough while someone wants to use it? And how do you keep mm -hmm. that space safe? And how to, so when you look at the consumer trends, it's, it's obvious that this trend is going to, it's here to stay. Yep. And you've got to figure out what is it that you're going to do. And what happened is one of my students actually came to me and said, hey, have you ever looked at this? This is what we did. You taught us how to raise the money, but this is what we did mm -hmm. with it. And after looking at the numbers, when you do the math, the math will tell you what to do. And right. it's just been a constant process of perfecting that. So, so, the, so let's get back to a point that you just raised about the, the idea of, of the capital, of getting the money to do this. Sure. So there may be people listening and going, yeah, this all sounds great, but I don't have any money to invest. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, the marketplace has never cared about how much money you have. It still doesn't. It does mm -hmm. care about the value you can create. That, that's what's important. And so when you lead with your need, that's why you haven't been able to get something done. You lead with, with what you can solve. Look for a problem and solve it. I mean, a quick example, if you will. If you look at, think about the last time you went to a medical provider, last time you went to the doctor. You mm -hmm. did not ask them, hey, what was your grade in biology? You didn't ask right. them. You might not even ask them what school they came from. You didn't even ask them, hey, did you wash your hands before you came in the room? Mm -hmm. All of those things are important for what they do, <laughs> but you did not ask because you did not care. At mm -hmm. that time, you were trying to consume the services of someone who you believed could solve your problem. That's what you cared about. The same is true here. The same is true for people who have capital. And it can be a challenge or at least a different way of thinking, but, but ask yourself a very simple question. What problem can you solve for someone who has capital? And real estate is one of the best ways to solve a tax problem for mm -hmm. sure. Now, that's not the yeah. only reason, but I'm just trying to give you an idea that your resources in terms of what you have personally, completely irrelevant. Even if you have resources, for those of you who have them, I'll just be very clear and direct that is going to handicap you long-term because you will still need to find out how to use and access other people's resources. That right. was the gift we were given because we were given the gift of literally no resources from the beginning. The one thing we had to figure out is how to use other people's resources from mm -hmm. the beginning. And I don't care how much money you got, you will always have to add, add, uh, access somebody else's resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, that then becomes its own superpower. So what was your first one then? How did you initially, how did you figure out or what did you initially access? Technically, that one was called what is known as a, a subject to deal. So uh, I learned that you could, it, it was uh, takeover payments. In fact, if you go on Craigslist and, or, you know, do a search for just the Google search for the words, takeover payments, do it right mm -hmm. now, you will find something, something somewhere where somebody is like, hey, can you just take over the payments? <laughs> And if you can take over the payments, they're like, thank you. That is the extent. That's, that could be all they want. Take over mm -hmm. payments. And I get that you may not have heard of it. That doesn't mean it's not true. And right. what it comes down to is that was my way in. Someone, mm -hmm. now you, you hear, listen to this. Someone who was in foreclosure sold me their house while I was squatting in bank-owned property. <laughs> that was the situation, right? Mm -hmm. And I had to raise, I think it was like 15,000, 12,000, something like somewhere between 12 and $15,000 mm -hmm. to close the transaction because I didn't have it. Right. And then once yep. closed, I had to execute a repair, a rehab, a light rehab on the property and put a tenant in there. Mm -hmm. And I did all of that while squatting in bank owned property with a credit score of 398, never having done it before and never seeing the property. 
It's, mm -hmm. not, it's about the problems. Can you solve the problems? And if you can, then great. People will give you a shot to solve their problem anytime. Yeah, no, it's it, that's that's fascinating, and and as like you said, I mean, it's fascinating that for anybody listening, that you could do all of that in a situation where most people on the outside would say, ah, oh, there's no way if you're you know squatting and you've got three ninety credit, there's no way you could do. Well, any we do of that this. all the time. It's human. Yeah, we're presented yeah. with an opportunity, and the first twelve things you think about is everything you don't have. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, but that <laughs> that wasn't the question. I, my question yeah. could be simply, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? It's a yes or a no, I haven't. <laughs> Not, oh, I don't have any money. That's okay, wonderful. <laughs> have you considered? Ha have you ever thought about how could I solve somebody's problem? Because mm -hmm. when you do that, that's what entrepreneurs do. We get yeah. paid to solve people's problems. Now, the bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the bigger the paycheck, period. Mm -hmm. Solve teeny tiny problems. Okay, great. You get what you get. But you know what? Housing is a huge problem. Yeah, so solve yeah. it. Yeah, and obviously, you know, live, living in Orange County, living in San Diego, yeah, with you know that <laughs> access to housing is a big, big problem. Absolutely. Um, yeah, but here's a, here's a great point. So as you're making as solving problems, right? So so as you mentioned, um, you know, there's a gig economy today. There's a mobility yes. of people, and yes, okay, there's been a pandemic and all of that. And, you know, there's been yes. shut down, but it'll come back. But also, I noticed on one of your um, on one of your items is you know you advise people how to set up an Airbnb, right? And and you've got to and you look at it now is. Um, that people over the next while, you're going to see a spike in Airbnb because people are going to want to drive to vacations. Oh. They want to go to self-contained vacation. So to your point, there's a fantastic opportunity out there now because there's going to be a big demand. Not only fantastic, but unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Because again, this is my first pandemic. Is it yours? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th Thankfully, I wasn't around for the uh, the Spanish flu. Yeah, uh, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> and uh, so, because of this, though, but if you take a just take a small moment and study yeah. what happened, the economics around the Spanish flu, you mm -hmm. will see patterns and trends that are emerging again. And with that, just extrapolate. Just think about it. If you've been forced to stay home for a while, what is the first yeah. thing you want to do? Is go anywhere other than home, right? Yeah. But at the same time. Because of, and here's a very simple thought, because of the nature of this particular situation going on, you realize, here, here's something that you, you double think now. Right yep. now, you double think shaking someone else's hand. Mm -hmm. You double think simply handing cash to the cashier. Yep. You, you double think, you'll double think. Think about it. What if you went to a hotel and you know how they hand you the, 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 the room key? Yeah. Ah, that's probably going to be a little bit different. And, and what about touching an elevator call button? Are mm -hmm. you going to do that? Or is that going to be all be different? When you put all of these types of things together, what you end up realizing is things have to adapt and change. And one of those things is density for a business. A business yes. that is reliant upon density and volume has to make some of the most biggest changes. Well, yeah. a short-term rental operator while, yes, we like volume, we're not required to have density yes. because we can put six, seven, eight people in one location. A family can stay together without having to intermingle amongst thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands as you go through the hotel lobby. Yeah, These okay. things are changing consumer behavior, and that's where demand lies. Is a yeah. right around consumer behavior. And, and some of the recent studies that have come out, the, the groups that are changing the fastest are those that are in the elderly population and those that are, uh, have children under the age of 18, mm -hmm. both um, single parents with children under 18 and married with kids under the age of 18. They're the ones making the, the changes first. And it makes sense because yeah. I don't want to accidentally expose my kid to COVID. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, cool. So how can I do that, but still not stay home? Well, yeah. hey, we can stay at this, we can stay at this uh, apartment. We can stay at this house. Mm -hmm. We can do it. That's exactly what people are doing. Yeah. And, and to be honest, as someone who I had to travel internationally a, a week or so ago for a family emergency oh, and wow. having... And having traversed the world and come back during this, I can tell you that um, people are not going to want to do it. I can just tell you that people are no. not going to want to do it. 
and no. therefore, <laughs> and uh, it's not comfortable. It's not a fun way to travel. And uh, so people, as I said, you know, there's great opportunity. There is great opportunity here. So what are, what are some of the things then that you advise people, okay, when they first get into this as how do you, um, you know, maintain it and keep going rather than, you know, maybe just, you know, get one and then say, okay, this is cool. I'm, I'm good with this. So what it comes down to is, and this is, this is true of Indian industry, but it definitely true mm -hmm. here is in a fragmented industry. This is basically what we're talking about is yeah. uh, short term rentals is very, very fragmented. You then must develop and or find a way to have access to somebody else's system, a system mm -hmm. that has the ability to pull together all of the resources that you need to do to actually deliver the service. That's the challenging part here. And one of the things that uh, having when you own a portfolio or have a portfolio that spans multiple states and it's hundreds of units and it's beyond your personal ability to service in and of itself, this is the experience I came from. And I'm like, well, I just need to build that same system. Well, if I build that same system, then I can have as many of these short term rentals as I want and they make more money and they provide more jobs. And I mean, as I kept thinking about it, it was like, well, this is what makes sense. But the answer to the question is systems. People, if you are stuck right. at one or any number for that matter, then it's a systems issue. And all you have to do is ask yourself the following question. If I added today, like today you're at, I don't know, 10, one, whatever. Um, but if I added 100 units tomorrow, how much more of my time personally mm. is required? And when you, if, if that thought in and of itself both terrifies you, but then later excites you as you begin to think about it. Um, mm -hmm. It's because you have a system issue. And then the only other question you have to ask is, well, what would break first? Because that'll tell you where the most urgent need is uh, inside your system of what it is that you would need to fix. And then you just go fix that. But then you ask the question again, and again, and again, until you've worked your way all the way through the problem to where you know that, hey, if I added 100 units today, it wouldn't require any additional time out of my day. Okay. And, and that's where we are. And that's what we teach people to do is so that they can build a source of income without mm -hmm. having to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that I'm and just solving the problem I experienced. That's it. And, and, you, and as you say, you scale by system and process and not by yes. time. And yeah. 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 And there's a, you know, you can always have process improvement and we go through that and we, but, and that, but that's the, there is no secret. There is no magic. I mean, it's been out there for forever. So I happen to just be one of those mm -hmm. people who like to study and look at systems and I, and they make sense to me. So it's easy for me to see how systems can solve certain things and, and build it. Mm -hmm. And as in short term, and as you say, I mean, short term rentals, I mean, you, you've you done it, right? You don't necessarily, they don't have to be close by you. They can be somewhere completely no. different. You can have like never seen it. And I think that's something yes. that maybe a lot of people that may, that may be a little scary to people say, oh, what do you mean oh, I sure. would own something, own something that I would never see? Well, one, I didn't say own either. Yeah, I mean, it, okay, yes. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 I get it. I totally understand. It is scary. But that's why we also say we want you to start. I want you to start in a perfect world. You're going to start with something that's no more than 15 minutes from your house. Mm -hmm. Because when you are building a brand new system or at least brand new to you system, you, it takes time to learn how to learn how to operate it. I mean, I could give right. you a, a, a Canon 1DX Mark II camera, which is a very high-end mm -hmm. sports camera. I mm -hmm. can give that to you right now. But that doesn't <laughs> mean you know how to use it. Just because yep. you have the money, it's going to take you time to learn exactly how to manipulate the camera in order to produce the result that you're after. And this is no different here. You know, a camera is a very elaborate system for simp for doing one thing, capturing images. Short-term mm -hmm. rentals, a very elaborate system for doing one thing, providing access, comfortable, clean, safe, affordable housing to somebody who needs it on a temporary basis. That's it. It's a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of moving parts and it takes you time to learn it. So, but once you've learned it, then yeah, it's designed and that was, that's was that been the test. We have progressively increased the distance between our house and how far away uh, the units are. And we've. <laughs> what's funny is that some, some of our students, that's like one of the first things that they'll do, they'll get six, seven, eight, nine units and then 
they'll go to Thailand, they'll go to, <laughs> yeah, they'll go, I, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's funny mm-hmm. to watch because they just want to test it. They're like, and, and I, I went over there and I was there for two weeks and the business still worked. I'm like, yes, that's exactly <laughs> what it's supposed to do. But this is a new thought process for most yeah. humans because that's not what we were taught. K through 12, mm-hmm. everything we were trained to see is spelled J-O-B. And you can't do that most of the time. Yeah. And as you said, I mean, it's a whole, you know, there's a lot of changes coming to the world and a lot of uh, a lot of unknowns out there. So I think uh, now is the time when, you know, people obviously need to expand their 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 thought process and, you know, break out of, you know, established established mm-hmm. paradigms. Um, so before we finish up, uh, Jay, is there anything else you'd just like to are there any other you know tips you'd like to give people? Well, just remember where there's chaos, there's cash flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Start before you're ready. And the number one skill that you must remember is how to fail. And I, which means I tend to ask people to fail fast, fail forward, and fail frequently. Those are the fundamental things that keep me moving forward, keep us growing, keep us changing, but most importantly, allow us to uncover and discover new ways to solve problems for other people. And so long as you continue to do that, then you got a really, really good shot at building something, making something for yourself that can quickly, well, solve a lot of problems for a lot of people, but also solve what could be your problem of just mm-hmm. feeling like you have choice and freedom. Right. And that's, and that's beautiful, Jerry, because at, at the end, I think that's what most people want to feel like is that they have choice and, and freedom. Um, all of Jay's information is going to be in his contributor bio. But before we go, Jay, please do yes. tell people a little bit more about Cashflow Diary and what you do. What we do is, is very simple. We take individuals and turn them. We create entrepreneurs, but we specifically, we create the ones that care about cash flow. For having you to be able to produce, to learn how to build, own, and control assets long-term, over time, it's not get rich tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Get rich eventually. Okay. Right. And, but most importantly, learning all of the financial education and steps that transform you, like literally a U2.0, uh, over time. And that's what we do. And we've been doing it for a number of years and it's a lot of fun. That's fantastic. All right, Jay, um, thank you very much for talking to us today. Um, I'm sure that was very valuable to people out there because I know people are out there looking for for choices and, and to establish freedom. And again, I mean, one of the things that things like pandemics and, and um, any of these catastrophic events, you know, teach us is that, as you said, I mean, Job security, not so much anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to start thinking about yourself and not always relying on a company or something because, let's face it, when there's a catastrophe, you could be the first one out the door, right? Yeah, well, and here's what I will tell you. Being someone who employs other people, Mm -hmm. the people that we have retained are the ones who are the most valuable, the ones who have produced the most value for the company in their role, the ones who are Mm -hmm. continually upgrading themselves to make sure that the company is going to receive value from them. Whether you're an employee, self-employed, business owner, investor, it's always about value. You just must remember who is the customer that you are serving. And if you're being an employee, it doesn't mean you're gonna lose the job, but it does mean make yourself more valuable, literally indispensable, and you won't have a problem. And even mm-hmm. if you do, you'll get picked up by someone else yeah, because yeah. they'll see that, oh my gosh, there's a lot of value here. I mean, that's what I'm doing right now is we're hiring mm-hmm. in various different ways. But you know what I'm looking for? Who's going to produce the most value? <laughs> yeah. So listen, then, thank you for saying that just before we go. You just said something there that um, I just want to reiterate and uh, preached over and over again is you said, upgrade yourself. Yes. Like, don't wait, don't wait, don't sit, because people often sit around and wait for, oh, like for the company to train me or something. It's like, invest in yourself, because nobody cares about you as much as you do. <laughs> no, that, that <laughs> and, and that job you're waiting for, yeah. it's not coming back. And if it does mm-hmm. come back, it won't be the same, because all jobs will change. The protocols, mm-hmm. the training, the what is important to the customer has changed, which means you will have to go through new training. There is no Mm -hmm. version of it being like it was. And understanding that, preparing for it, building yourself through that process, 
And on the other side of that, there's a new version of you that's waiting. I'll give you a big old hug, I promise. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic, Jay. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.